Hi guys, how's it going? It has been a really busy and exciting day around here. Look at what just arrived. First thing this morning, big old truck pulls in with 20 massive, gorgeous maple trees. Look at these. Oh my goodness. So Aaron and I went on a date day this past week and we always end up at a garden center or in this case we ended up at Jaker which is a re-wholesale nursery over in Idaho. Um, it was just a stop we made on the way home but we knew this fall we wanted to focus on getting more shade trees put in the big lawn. So out of these 20 trees 16 or just about 16 of them are going to end up in the big grass area. And when I say big grass area <laughs> this is the one I mean. We never intended on keeping it 100% grass. In fact we've got a whole bunch of maple trees on that side. There's autumn blaze. There is a locust tree over there in that corner. And then we're going to start in uh, by putting more here along the edge, just to kind of frame the whole thing in and create some shade over the lane. Uh, and then we're gonna start putting a few more towards the center of the lawn area. I also intend on cutting out some flower beds, some big deep flower beds here and there along the edges um, and putting more evergreens and things like that in there. But everything is a process, you know, and we thought that by putting the grass in, even though we didn't intend on keeping 100% of it in there, it really helps with uh, keeping the dust down, keeping the temperature a little cooler, weed suppression, all of those things. And it helped us kind of define where we needed all of our water lines which is really important. So out of the 20 trees, 16 of them are autumn blaze maples and four of them are Pacific sunset maples, which might end up over by the Hartley. And the size of these, when we bought the trees that are over here, we bought them from the same place. I don't remember them being this big when we planted them. I mean, I remember them being big, but these just seem like super sized, which is fine by me. Still great big root balls. We have an auger coming on Monday. Today is Friday. Um, so they'll have to sit here. We're going to come out here several times a day. I just left the water on and we're just going to give their root balls a little soak so that they stay nice and moist. But it is pretty nice out at this point. I think today's high is maybe 79 or 80 and we're getting down into the high 40s at night. So it's pretty mild. Uh, you know, it's not good to lift root balls like this right out of where they've been hilled in and a little bit more insulated and moisture you know the material they use it's like a wood chip or something but it keeps moisture in and it keeps the temperature cooler around the root ball so you wouldn't want to have them delivered and then wait forever uh, to plant them in fact the pacific sunsets we won't be ready to plant those for a while so we are going to move those out of this group today and we're going to hill them in in some compost until we're ready right here autumn blaze so these are a hybrid between a red maple and a silver maple, kind of uh, combining both of their best traits. The reasons why we settled on autumn blaze maples over all the other varieties of trees that are out there is one, maples do pretty well in our area. They're not bothered by any insect. We don't have to treat them with a systemic insecticide, which is huge. Um, the only thing they tend to deal with in our area is uh, chlorosis because of our high pH, but that's kind of typical of a lot of things in our area. It's just something we keep on routine, treating things with chelated iron to keep that nice deep green color. However, the other maple we got, I'm gonna show you that one here in a second. When we were walking the yard, which the yard at Jaker, I don't even know how many acres it is, but a lot of acres, it was the prettiest, best looking tree with the deepest green leaves. So I don't know if that maple is maybe a little bit more tolerant of high pH, but anyway, I'll show you that in a second. Autumn Blaze also grows quite large. We wanted something really tall. So 50 feet tall is how big they get, that's huge. 40 feet wide, we wanted that kind of canopy, you know, over a lane. And so to get that, when you've got trucks coming in and out on occasion, you have to accommodate that. You have to be able to have something that can be limbed up high enough to where things can drive underneath it. Well, if you have, you know, a 30 foot tree, you have to limb it up so high that the proportions would be all off. We want still a substantial canopy above that lane, that tunnel. Um, so you have to have something tall in order to do that. Uh, they're also a variety that's more drought tolerant, which is big in our area. We know we're hot and dry, high desert. Um, so we do, if we're doing something in mass, we want it to be something that's a little less water hungry than others. And they're fast growing. So like three to five feet a year, once they're established, like once they've been in their spot for a little while, they'll take off and they'll they'll do it pretty quickly. Aaron was just telling me he thought that our maples this year just kind of sat for most of the season and then just like three weeks ago seemed to have like found their stride and they've put on a significant amount of growth like 
recently. They're also a zone three through eight, so they're very winter hardy. Uh, we're a zone six, so we fall kind of right in the middle. They, they do great here. And they're fall color, you guys. <laughs> bright red. I mean, it's just like that stunning, bright, vibrant red. They're awesome. The Pacific Sunset Maple now. Okay, the fall color on this one, I mean, the sunset in its name is perfect because it's just this most like electrifying blend. I don't even know how to describe it. Maybe we can pop a uh, picture up on the screen, but it's like the bright red, bright orange, bright yellow. It's just a gorgeous blend of all of them. So you can see the difference between the Pacific Sunset and the Autumn Blaze. Let me see if I can climb up here, whoa. Pacific Sunset leaves, look at how deep green those are. They're amazing and I love how broad the leaves are and that's the autumn blaze there. So it's naturally just a little bit of a lighter green, like a medium green here. Pick one of those off. Yeah, look at that. So autumn blaze leaf is on the top, Pacific sunset is on the bottom. Isn't that amazing? So the Pacific Sunset variety is a hybrid between an Acer truncatum, which is a type of, uh, they call it a purple blow maple or Shantung maple native to Northern China, and the Acer plantanoides, is that how you say it? It's a, a Norway maple, kind of combining some of the best traits. I know that the Acer truncatums are a type of maple that are super duper tough. Um, and if you have an area where you really want a maple, but you struggle with normal maples, it kind of, it allows you to, to plant one because it can handle so much. And then Norway maples are just beautiful in their structure and their fall color and all of that. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see how that variety does. I've never personally grown that one or even personally in real life seen its fall color just in pictures, so I am excited. Oh, and one thing I thought was interesting about that variety, which doesn't apply to me, but I know it applies to a lot of you guys, it is resistant to the Japanese beetle. So that's great. So anyway, I just wanted to get out here and show you guys all these gorgeous trees before we haul off into our project for the day. So we've got the four Pacific sunsets. You can kind of tell the difference in their bark. This one's a little bit more tan, a tiny bit more corky, and then Autumn Blaze is more silver and smooth. So we've got one, two, three, four of the Pacific sunsets, and the rest of them here are the Autumn Blaze. So just real quick, we are planning on spacing the Autumn Blaze the same as those are over there, like the same distance into the grass and the same uh, width apart. Aaron's out there mowing. And then we may pop one about where those annuals are, and then about where I'm standing, really, like one in here and one maybe over here to kind of draw some of that interest over. That's kind of the plan, we shall see. But I think I already said we're gonna bring you along for that. We'll show you where they all end up and the whole process, the whole bit. Here's what we've got in the gator today. So I do have one flat of perennial geraniums, hardy geraniums that I want to plant. I've had these for a little while. They've just been sitting in their containers. Carmina, Cranesbill, or hardy geranium, uh, they are, a ground cover, so six to eight inches tall, 18 to 24 inch spread. Zone four tolerates moist soil, long blooming, semi evergreen. So let's see, what is the zone again? Zone four. And it's probably, I'm guessing, like zone four through eight, maybe. So on the higher ends of the zone range, they'll be more evergreen. On the lower ends, you probably need to cut them back and they'll come back fresh. Anyway, I thought it would be nice to get these in the ground uh, somewhere so they don't have to stay in these anymore. And then we've got our shovel so we can dig perennials out and then of course the augers. Just seeing those fresh trees though this morning, I don't know what it is, but it kind of just gives me an, a boost of energy and just excitement in putting more structure out here and creating more shade. Uh, I mean, everything that we've added out here, like I've noticed a tremendous amount of um, like wildlife, wildlife activity out here that I didn't notice before. And I think the more and more we get this area you know, covered with plants and shade and forage, we'll have even more of that, which would be awesome. In fact, I uh, ran and got the kids yesterday because I saw a snake out here, which is awesome. I love it. I know that snakes aren't awesome for a lot of you guys, but it was a little one, non-poisonous. We don't have poisonous snakes here. Here we are in the North Garden. Barn is here, chicken coop, Hartley. We are prepping to clear this area out so we can create a brand new space. Like right now, the opening is right here to this garden. The new opening is going to be right here. So I'll have a nice big entryway in this area. Once it's all cleared, we're going to uh, mark out where we want to have our grass pathway and we're gonna have uh, sprinklers put in for that. And that's kind of the first step in this space is getting it cleared so that we can get those pieces that we know, like the pathway through this area. It's going to come through the arbor and it's gonna go to the right and through this space, but it's also gonna arch over to the left so it goes back behind the barn because we do access that 
from this space as well. So in the end, we're gonna have a lot less grass in this area, just the grass pathway, which will be a little less wide than the ones out in the South Garden, probably about 10 feet rather than 15. Um, and then we can start really packing it in. Where all of this stuff is right here, so, you know, this stuff here, and where the old driveway, or it wasn't ever a driveway, but it was just gravel over here. So where the boxwoods end, it's going to swoop over almost all the way to this hose. And all of this will be planting area as well as where the gravel was over there. And we plan on planting it fairly thickly through here so you can't, maybe can't even see to this back area so that this space is more like a secret garden. Kind of this little secret pocket of space, a little room back in here. And we did start in planting a mixed border back here and the things are looking pretty good. We lost one of the Deodora seed, no. No, yeah, just one. So we've got a pine, a birch, the Deodora, a crab apple, blue spruce, another birch and a pine. So anyway, we kind of carved out a little bit of a flower bed, even though we knew the flower bed wasn't gonna stay that shape, but because the grass pathway will come through here and go back out, and then more of this will become planting area. In terms of what we're gonna be digging out today, oh, the shade feels nice. It's not even that hot, shade still feels nice. Uh, we are going to be focusing on just a few perennials in this back area. I actually have um, a friend coming today to dig out some hydrangeas and probably some other things. Um, and then a couple other friends and a couple family members who are gonna come and dig some things that they want in this space. So we do try to rehome as much as we can before we clear an area. Um, the only thing that I lament a little bit is the boxwoods. However, I do know that in order to move forward in this space, they've got to go. They're just, the, they're just too big. That's just the wrong thing in this area. It breaks this space in half, but not in a way that, I don't know, not in a way that I really want to put together two different spaces in here. So anyway, we are taking those out and moving the fountain out and all of that business as well. So again, just like every other project, it gets really scary like real scary and I get nervous about it before it starts to improve and you start seeing those, the other like new things going in, the new plants and new structure pieces. Um, so it, it's a while before it starts feeling like it's your own. And I almost feel like I wanna keep these through the winter because I know we're not gonna get to a lot of the planting, but we have to have this gone in order to do the grass pathway and get the sprinklers in this fall. So anyway, we're gonna dig some plants. That's the fun part and we're gonna move them to the South Garden. So those are the hydrangeas. I've got a friend coming for those today. And then most of the perennials are in this bed. I've got geraniums in particular, a lot of geraniums that'll be easy to move. Uh, we've got some sedum, not the best time to be moving the sedum when it's in its peak glory, but I don't wanna lose these plants. And I know Autumn Joy is an easy one to find, but these are enormous and they're gorgeous and they're free <laughs> to me. I mean, these were here when we moved in. So we'll move those out. Uh, we've also got, let's see, down the way here, there are some more geraniums right in here, kind of a lower, I think this might be Ann Folkard. It's like got a bright pink bloom. Let's see. Yeah. See that? And what else? There's other geraniums right in here. More geraniums in here. That's pretty much what I'm gonna be, oh, oh, and over here we've got the Stand By Me Clematis, the blue variety. They've already been cut back once this season. They're just coming out of bloom for their second time, but they're nice, and I think that they're gonna be e pretty easy to move. I've got a couple of peonies in here too that we'll maybe try to move today. They're a coral colored. I can't remember if they're like the Hawaiian is Hawaiian coral a variety? I mean, I know coral charm is a variety and I already dug, I dug some of those up and moved them from behind the Hartley area. These might be the same. These might be coral charm. They're pretty, they're beautiful. So we'll get those, those moved over as well. Look at that Caryopteris though. Do you see all the honeybees on it? This is that, is it sunshine blue? Something like that. It's got more yellow leaves that contrast the blue blooms. And then there's a Miss Ruby Budlea. There's a Miss Violet Budlea. And then there's the blue chiffon rose of Sharon, which I, sh I said I would show you this the other day in a video where we planted another one of these and then I forgot, <laughs> but that's looking good as well. There's a white pillar rose of Sharon. A lot of these things though, I've got these planted already out in the South Garden. Um, so I'm going to wait until, to see if anybody else wants them before I go to the trouble of moving those. Okay, so I'm just going to start digging and moving and then we'll do a tour in the end. Thank you. 
got a bunch of stuff moved and most everything looks good so far except for the hardy geraniums. So don't freak out when you see them because they look like they're gonna die. Uh, but geraniums do that whenever I have ever moved them you dig them up get as much of the roots as you can you plant them and they immediately wilt and not just a little bit wilt like flat wilt flat to the ground so you just have to look at those and imagine that they're not wilted I should probably do this tour tomorrow morning because they'll have picked up by then. But let's start right over here on the west side. These were the only potted things that I put in the ground today, the little geraniums. So there's one, two, three here. Just kind of hoping for them to grow and over the lids just a little bit. They're so soft you can move them away to get in the lid if you need to, but they'll just kind of provide a nice cover right there. And then they kind of swing around the front side of these hostas, which this one doesn't, doesn't look awesome, but it doesn't look too bad. This one is fairly sad. And this is what our hostas do toward this time of the year. You should have seen these. And I'm, I don't know if I took a picture of them or if I showed you guys in a tour. I'll have to see if I can dig up what they look like this spring because they were absolutely spectacular. I think it's our dry heat and the intensity of the heat, but also the wind. Because you know, my parents, they have a lot of hostas in their garden. We're 10 minutes away from each other. Um, and theirs get burned on the end, but they don't reduce in size. Like ours burn so terribly bad that we end up having to just groom off the leaves because they look so bad. And I think it's because ours are so much more exposed to the wind right now. But I think one day when we have a mature garden, I think that's what they've got going for them. They have so many big trees so many things protecting their perennial garden spaces that they just don't get the wind like we do like I'll call my mom sometimes and be like oh my goodness the wind here oh you know what in the world she's like there's no wind <laughs> so anyway it's crazy just the way the land works um, a lot of storms that come through either we get them or they get them but we rarely get them at the same time so we thought at first maybe it was a water issue so we tried upping the water that didn't help I think it's just needing to be protected. And I think putting them in full shade here is probably the way you would wanna go, or maybe just even a little bit of morning sun, but no afternoon sun. Anyway, I'm just hoping for this to kind of just fill in and kind of go underneath the perennials. We do have a witch hazel right here. And then it actually turns more sunny right here, which is perfect because geraniums can do shade, shadier locations and some sun too, but it goes right to a salvia. Um, and then some pincushion flowers that we just recently planted. This is one of the other ones. I actually forgot to turn the camera on when I planted this. <laughs> so this is the other one that's wilted. This is an acanthus or bear's breeches, which I planted last year. And I thought it was, it was a total experiment. I hadn't grown one before. It got nice and big this year. It didn't bloom, but it got big the first year and I got big this year. I don't think they like to be transplanted. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but when I was digging it up, it's got those big, thick like tuber roots and I think I read that somewhere that they like just plant them and leave them alone but you know it's either if I left it alone it would get bulldozed so I thought I'm gonna dig this up see what happens so I popped it in the ground it's wilted now uh, it wilted pretty much right away when I put it in the back of the gator so then it stayed back there for probably I don't know 15 20 minutes before I got it in the ground so hopefully it perks back up but we'll see okay the rest are out in the south garden Okay, first batch of plants, you guys. I love the sedum right here. It's so pretty, like instant impact, right? I mean, we recently planted some iris right there that came from really nearby these. There's some Veronica, look at the tree. <laughs> look at the geraniums we replanted today. <gasps> oh, I don't even wanna get close on them because they look so, so sad, but they do that and they will, they will bounce. Like I'm not worried about them, but you know, I don't, love showing you guys plants that look like that but that's just how it goes these did not come out with a super huge root system but sedum really does not have a super deep root system anyway and they're just tough as nails look at that color if you look across here you can see the pufferfish hydrangeas the agastache there's a pen a penicetum with the beautiful seed heads some hardy geraniums down the way it's just coming together, I'm loving it. But this will be nice because we do have some bulbs in here and we're gonna add more this fall, uh, but the iris will add some late spring color. I think that will be really nice. I had three little tiny clumps of sedum left and I just popped them right over here. We're just gonna walk down the way here because there's several things over on this side. Oh, sidetrack. Brandywine viburnum, you guys. Look at the berries. Aren't those gorgeous? I didn't even realize until today. I actually saw one 
at uh, the garden center and it stopped me in my track. I looked at the tag and thought, oh, well, I have some of those. So I made it a point to like really pay attention when we were coming back and I noticed that this one is just loaded. And this one looks stressed. Yep, we'll see what happens with this one. Same plant right here, not doing it quite as well. Okay, next group of plants here are the peonies. Look at how big and gorgeous that one is right there. It just fills in that spot beautifully. And I'm thinking I wanna put another skinny-ish evergreen back here. I thought about putting the peonies toward the back because all summer long they're in full sun um, when they're back there. But I don't know, they have such big beautiful blooms and I really do like the fall color. Um, you can see we don't deal with a lot of powdery mildew or anything like that on them. So they really are just a pretty shrub when they're done blooming. And there's another one there and another one behind those grasses. Okay, next right over here. You can see all the Stand By Me clematis right here. Now there are eight and I did put them really close together and that was on purpose. One thing I've learned about this plant having grown it for probably four or five years at this point, you either need to provide support for it, like a nice ring around it, which is what I did with all the Stand By Me lavender that's out here. Um, so I may bring some rings out here as well, or you can plant them close enough together that they'll support each other. They'll grow up and kind of lean on each other. Um, they could still tend to be a little bit messy that way. So it's something to consider when you're planting this one. Totally worth it though, because of the amount of color they provide. And their seed heads are awesome to use in flower arrangements as well. And these are several years old too. So you can kind of see the growth habit, how they stay fairly tidy and narrow. So don't be afraid to plant these close together. The rest are over here. I think we should get there via the dahlia rose here. So pretty. Oh, geez, look at these. Oh. Okay, so here we are in this corner, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite spots, you guys. There's something about the color palette here. I mean, all everything that you see here, they've all been planted this year. So, I mean, imagine once these have kind of filled in a little bit more, matured like the hydrangeas here, those are the limelight primes. Oh my goodness, it's gonna just be glorious, but the color just, yeah, just love the colors here. We've got one large clump of hardy geraniums, which this one didn't, I mean, it's wilting, but not quite as bad as the others. I was able to get a little bit more root ball on that one. And then there's a smaller piece right here. Um, and this one's got a really pretty kind of vibrant pink. It's almost the same pink as this Budlia, which is the ruby chip. So you can kind of see that there. It'll be nice to have, there's kind of a lavender pink there, purple, this vibrant pink, light pink, and then the vibrant pink again. So I think that'll be really nice. And then the hardy geraniums also have beautiful fall color, bright red. I'd actually like to have geraniums all the way over to the Budlias probably. Maybe with a little section of lamb's ear. And then we've got the serendipity alliums, which I hadn't planned on moving, but they were so easy to dig. My goodness. So it's kind of perfect because I don't need much. I just need like one step right here to turn the hose on. I don't even need to step there to turn the hose on. And then this, right here, that's as far as it goes. So I can plant stuff here and it's never gonna be in the way of a hose. Uh, we always pull it out that way. So it's just kind of a nice little thing to soften this area. Um, I think they were so easy to dig because they were incredibly dry. I'm not sure that the drip system back there is functioning properly. So they popped right out and you can see a bunch of dried leaves there and we need to deadhead them, but they bloom for quite a long time in the summer purple. So I think that will be really, really nice here. And then I had one left that I planted over here. Kind of looks cute popped in there. I've got some Monarda in here, the one serendipity. There's some day lilies. I had one Russian sage left from a project. And then we've got some blue Baptisia in there. And then that new dark lavender uh, hibiscus. How are our honeyberries doing? Oh, see? They're looking pretty decent. A little bit of green. <laughs> decent. My goodness, they look dead. There's a little bit of green on them. Okay guys, so the last thing, that's all the plants that we took care of today. The last thing I wanted to show you was in one of our annual beds, the one that's kind of out here where we just were, um, a watermelon plant, a volunteer watermelon plant came up and there are three huge fruit on it and I think one of them is ready. So we're gonna pick that and see, see what we got. Okay, Vi Violet Night Lobularia, amazing annual. 
Look at that. First of all, isn't this pretty? Do you remember what it looked like when I planted it? It looked like, it kind of looks messy a little bit when you very first get done planting these things. But once they fill in, they just, they're so gorgeous. I mean, the layering here, the vertigo penicetum and then the cannas, the plain, the blues. And then we have our sweet potato vine with our Super Tunia Vista snowdrift. And then around the back, I planted some gomfrina, which this is my favorite, my favorite use of gomfrina thus far. We've planted it in lots of containers. We've planted it in mass by itself in the landscape, but I love it intermixed with all this other stuff. Isn't that just beautiful? Ugh. Okay, but you can see the vine right here, right? <laughs> Look at that. Look at the watermelon. And then in here, I mean, there's three watermelons that I can see. I'm guessing that if there were more, I would probably see them. I'm kind of guessing. Unplug pink salvia, you guys. <laughs> this is why I'm not planting it anymore. Everything else just thrives and I have the hardest time with that plant. Okay, but we've got a melon right here and I was looking earlier today and I think that this melon might be ready. It's got the nice spot on the bottom right there. And then that little curly cue thing is dried up. So we're gonna cut into this and see how it is. Look at this on a volunteer plant. Let's go try it. Okay, don't roll off, stay put. I also saved a beautiful basket of sedum stems. They kind of like were bent over or broke during transport. So I'm gonna put those in a, in a vase with some water. Okay guys, moment of truth. Oh, it smells good. so awesome when that happens when you didn't even plant it. Yeah, so if you look in here, like this part is kind of like not the best, but all the stuff around the outside and then a little bit closer down toward the bottom, you get a little bit more of the good stuff. I brought it out to better light so you guys could see. <gasps> Isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness, I'm loving it. So now I'm gonna go distribute watermelon to everybody. I just told Paula as I was walking in that I picked one of the watermelons and I would bring some out if it was good. <laughs> That's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm so excited for those trees. Oh, we will do a follow-up video though, like I said, uh, when we put them in. In fact, Aaron just asked if I wanted to go out there and flag where we want to put them. So I think that's what we're going to go out and do here in the next few minutes. So anyway, see you guys in the next video. Bye.